Our next guest, Frank Luntz, recently asked an esteemed group of former national security officials what they would say to the presidential candidates about the role that politics plays or doesn't play in the civilian military relationship. Choose the very best uh, military leaders who will give you good advice as they are sent to you by the Department of Defense and don't choose them because of some something that might be viewed as political. Choose the very best ones because what they are is their that precious diamond and you want to preserve that diamond for the long term and for the good of America. I would tell tell whoever wins has got to go then reach out to uh, the party that was defeated and try to uh, reestablish the principle that politics stops at the water's edge. All right, joining us now, pollster and communications strategist Frank Luntz, who conducted that interview. Uh, Frank, always wonderful to see you. Thanks for being here. Quite a group uh, that you assembled for this uh, of really impressive people. Uh, and I have to say, as, as we've been you know, covering the story, as I've been listening to them uh, talk, we think about what Donald Trump has said about the enemy within using the military in the wake of the election. I'm remembering back to when we saw General Milley march across Lafayette Square, something that he has expressed regret about doing uh, in, in the aftermath. What did you learn from this group? Uh, and what should we be focused on here with eight days to go uh, as you know, all of this incredibly important uh, context uh, you know, surrounds us? There are some things that are more important than politics. There are some things more important than an election. Our Constitution matters. Our way of, of life matters. And these generals, admirals, uh, assistant secretaries, uh, they ran the Army, they ran the Navy, they ran intelligence for America. These are an incredibly decorated group of people <clears throat> who are communicating one key principle. Keep partisan politics out of national security and out of foreign policy that there's some things where we have to do it together. And they're concerned about the politicization of all aspects of life, but more than anything else, the civil service, the people who are supposed to be nonpartisan, not bipartisan, but nonpartisan, and whether that could in some ways creep into the military and creep into foreign policy. They're alarmed, and I'm alarmed when they are alarmed. Did they say that they were more alarmed about the prospect of Donald Trump getting uh, elected and doing this, or Kamala Harris, or both? Uh, bo well, let me be clear. They would not even like this interview, because trying to use politics or partisanship to beat on someone when you're discussing what should happen in Ukraine, what should happen in the Middle East, what should happen with China, we're going to disagree, is their argument. And we're going to have very sharp disagreements. But once decisions are made, we need to go forward together. And that we don't want people in these positions of authority in national security that prioritize partisan gain over what's good and great about America. Uh, sure. I mean, absolutely fair enough. Uh, do they have any concerns about the way that it's been reported that, you know, Donald Trump talked about? what the military should be for him as the president? Well, they have concerns if any politician tries to use the military for political gain. I remind viewers something that I've learned over the last few years. The military is not there to defend just the country or a president. It's there for the Constitution. And that's who they swear an oath to. And the people watching this should, should sleep better at night knowing that the military understands this and that is the hope of everyone that the politicians not only recognize it, but respect it. In the end, it's the Constitution that matters most. And these seven experts, it was such a joy to moderate yeah. this focus group because these people prioritize the Constitution over everything else. Yeah, and of course, it was reported that one of the things that apparently Donald Trump was surprised by was that the generals did not, in fact, swear an oath to, to him or to the president, but to this piece of paper. Uh, Frank Luntz, so grateful to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Come back soon. It's an honor. Thank All you. All right.